Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm continuing with my visit recently with David Harper. So please welcome back, David. We were so lucky to have Will and Ellen. It might have been different if I was old enough to know who they were. Mm. I might have been in awe of them, but to me, uh, they're just our grandparents. <laughs> and years later, when I used to see Ralph on all these old Westerns, I went, oh my God, this guy was a working character actor for years. And you know what? Um, Earl was great because Earl would, he was never unapproachable. He'd always come down a lot. And uh, I, I, I told this story. Somebody asked me uh, for a story about the first time I, I met Earl Hamner. And all I remember was uh, he was the only adult in the room that wasn't giving off shark vibes. You know? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. The memory is not reliable and trustworthy <laughs> sometimes. But, you know, from the, from the moment we met him, it's like, oh, this is... We, didn't quite see that he was going to be our protector along the way too. Mm. So, yeah. So. Well, and it's also the perspective of what were you nine years old? So, yeah. Um, and we started the series the day after my 10th birthday. Yeah. So when we did the homecoming, um, you were, yeah, I think I was nine. nine. Um, yeah. If I look back and do the math, did we start filming in 71? And or, or yes. did we because it, it aired October in September. of 71. So you had okay. your birthday during right yes. as we so, were filming yeah. the homecoming. I, I yeah, I just turned 10 because I remember oh, okay. The first day on the set was the day after my birthday. Okay. And they had me, Eric, and John, one of the most tiny little dressing rooms possible. We've fallen all over each other and you know. I think that we, got old. We made the fast. big time, didn't we? <laughs> oh well, you remember the remember the dressing rooms that we had on the on the sound stage with the chicken wire and the cloth tops. Yeah, I, I remember because uh, Richard and Eddie Via, uh, our craft service guy, were always playing tricks on each other. And I think one time he got up on one of the sound stage stairwells and threw a bucket of water in the top of. Richard's and of course you know it's chicken wire and cloth and you know I, I you know I guess we were a little bit like the Marx Brothers because it was fun yeah it was fun it was work but it was fun you know yeah and I when I watch the credits and I see all those great cast people I I think about Dick Chafee who I was quite fond of and uh, you know the the crew guys were playing jokes on each other and we thought it'd be really funny one day to, to tie his bike to the rafters. And then when we broke for lunch and poor Dick spent like 20 minutes trying to get his bike down, I feel no. bad about that now, but, uh, so oh, yeah, that there, yeah. it just, I just flashed on they, Everyone was always, it was always so tricky about parking on the studio lot. Oh, and, yeah. um, and you would really, people would park in parking places that were like reserved for somebody. And I remember at one point somebody parked in, um, I think it was our sound recordist, um, William Flanner. I think it was his parking place. Or something. Somebody parked in his parking place and he arranged for somebody to get like a forklift and take the forklift. We had, <laughs> we had the bathrooms behind our, behind our soundstage. And, and he got somebody to lift the car up out of his parking place and put it on top of the roof of the bathrooms. <laughs> I didn't know that. I think it was him, but whoever it was, yeah. Somebody put it, put somebody's car up on the roof because they parked yeah. in their parking place. Prob <laughs> probably happened one too many times, right? I expect so. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, well, you know what, when, when, when production was booming at Warner brothers, it was off. It was hard to find parking spots back when, uh, you know, us younger folks had guardians, they would drop us off at the stage door and then they'd drive around for 20 minutes trying to find a place to park. When I talked with Cammie, um, I had asked her about, uh, like who she felt in the cast because she was the youngest, who she related to the most, who she felt, what kind of relationships she had with people. And she talked about 
you and her, because you were the youngest. And she said that you two used to play all over the lot oh, yeah. to do like shootouts on Western streets. And, you know, yeah, we, we used to play Bonnie and Clyde. Mm -hmm. uh, the insurance people, if they knew where we were off, you know, probably would have had a fit. Because <laughs> nobody, so half the time, nobody knew where we were. And, you know, some of those sets had rusty nails and stuff. But, yeah, we had a blast. It was a huge playground. Um, yeah. The car that John Crawford used for Ep Bridges, that was a Bonnie and Clyde car. Wow. And, you know, and we had bank sets to rob and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, she told that story a few times. I remember when we shot Phantom of the Studio. Do you oh, remember yeah. us shooting that little yeah. short film that we created on, on the studio, all of the kids in the cast? I have no idea whatever happened to that film. Do well, you know? uh, I was in possession of all that, and it just got lost. Oh. Uh, you know, Glenn Woodman, C was trying to teach me how to edit it, and um, I just couldn't get it. And, you know, I, I wish I'd just thought, Glenn, will you edit this for us? Mm -hmm. And you know what? I, the camera we use is this really nice camera that, that dad bought for me. And it was kind of problematic. There were times when we'd film something and it would eat the film. Um, you know, it'd get crunched up in there. And so it, it was not easy. But yeah, it would be nice to have whatever remnants of it is. Uh, I don't know if... If it's in a box in my garage, you know, like if it was at my parents' house and somehow or another they kept it, uh, of course, I don't know. It might be totally destroyed from bleaching or whatever, but yeah. oh yeah, we had a blast. I think John wrote the script. It was because we were, we were in love with the Pink Panther movies Yeah, and John wrote like almost all the dialogue and stuff. Remember? Pat Norris, uh, his, his little Wardrobe. kid played Billy the Kitty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we had to create our own adventures, but we were also limited because if we were in, particularly for, the, if, for all of us, if we were in hair and wardrobe and makeup, you could only get so messed up or, you know, we'd get... Mm -hmm. We'd get scolded if we, you know, got our, our wardrobe like torn or dirtier or, you know, they had to totally redo our hair or makeup. And uh, I have fond mm -hmm. memories of the, the two paintings of the house that we did. I think one was for Bob Jacks mm. and the other one was for Earl. Mm. Uh, I'd like to see those because if I remember, they were they were actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and somebody must have helped us with them because I'm certainly no artist. Oh, well. You know, Somebody. John, John did the outline with pencil and I mean, uh, you older kids did the detail stuff. Me and Cammy just got to like dab bushes and <laughs> stuff. But, uh, no, I remember they were actually quite good, you know, at least yeah. I thought they were. How did you see Jim Bob from beginning the arc of his character? You know, were there things that you, mm -hmm. that you related to about the character? Uh, well, I, I wasn't trying to craft anything. Uh, the whole airplane thing started because if you remember uh, Bobby Moore, our first costumer, I used to follow him around and there was an old wardrobe closet uh, on our stage. And I, he was, he was just going to get something. And I found that aviator's cap and I just asked him, Hey, can I wear this? And uh, he said, sure. No problem. Well, one of the writers saw it and, couple scripts later lo and behold jim bob's into airplanes and and people and you know of course the whole car thing people still ask me do you still work on cars do you still fly airplanes <laughs> <laughs> no never did no I mean, I, I, those I, cars I, were hard, some were really hard to drive and i i never drove oh, your horrible. car but that one looked like it would have been really hard there was so much play in the manual transmission i mean i nearly killed myself a couple times uh our transportation captain and he comes up to me on the set one day and he goes do you know you're driving in the next episode and i said do they know i can't drive <laughs> and so he had to give me quote unquote a crash course in about a week and uh i say crash course because i nearly 
I nearly electrocuted myself once. Wow. Uh, whenever we, they do a scene where I had to drive, um, like I would park the car next to the sawmill and they'd have the camera set up in front of me. And uh, I was famous for lurching. So as soon as I put that thing in the gear, the camera guys would just take off. <laughs> You know, I, I never ran over the camera, thankfully, but one time it was the episode where I'm teaching Cammy how to drive and we're on the back lot and I backed into one of those big green electrical boxes. Oh. And, um, you know, after the scene was over, uh, the driver captain came up as you know, you nearly killed yourself. Oh. So, um, yeah, th that particular, you know, it was the jalopy that I was trying to put together. That car was horrible to drive. But, you know, Joe Conley crashing that motorcycle kind of gave me a run for my money. That, but there was and that you had to ride that, too. Well, there was that motorcycle race episode right. where, you know, uh, I could barely hold it up just when it was standing there. Uh, my legs were too short and the center of gravity was really high, but... Uh, you know, they said that those suicide clutches are awfully difficult and poor old Joe. I mean, I, I was never there, but I heard he, he had trouble stopping and that he crashed into a couple tables. And of course you remember Richard's accident on that other show when he yeah. nearly decapitated himself. People don't might remember the episodes where he's using a cane. Yeah. And he, I think he broke his leg, right? Yeah. He broke his ankle, his leg, something. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how so much of that, because I just watched the motorcycle race recently, and uh, there was a bunch of stuff where I, and I was talking with John Dayton, our production assistant, um, about it. And I said, well, because it looked like you were either attached to something, being towed somehow to get all those close-ups of you circling uh, in the, um, that they I, were towing you, or you were hooked up. I, or you were I don't remember uh them towing me at all um and, and you can always tell when they're doing that uh but it was like a know, close up of you oh well I, I never actually drove the thing i just wasn't able to okay and, so uh, how did they do I'm sure, stuff? you know i don't know uh maybe it was a, a tow thing um but gosh you know I'm, i mean i'm getting ready to turn 61 i'm old <laughs> and those those are memories from 40 50 years ago you know so i'll just feign senility right if i can't remember <laughs> yeah. something you know i got no problem doing that once again i'd like to thank david for joining me i will be back with more behind the scenes of the waltons more ask judy and more with david harper thanks for watching